Scripture reading this morning is from Matthew 5, 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. As he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It is great to see everyone here this morning. And as you know, it was starting to snow uh, rather heavily when we came in. Tim Walton just told me there's probably about two inches out there already. And uh, looking at the radar, there's a lot more coming behind it. Uh, so the elders have decided that uh, we will head on out after worship this morning, no Bible classes, and uh, given the temps and the precipitation through the rest of the afternoon, uh, no evening service. Uh, if you are a guest of ours today and didn't yet have an opportunity to fill out one of these yellow cards, we would appreciate you doing that very, very much. Give us a record of uh, your presence with us today so we can thank you for that later. Members, you probably already filled out one of the uh, green cards. If you haven't, just leave those on the pew. They'll be picked up a little later. And some of you already did this today, but uh, since we, didn't, we, we were having software problems and bulk email problems, and uh, maybe you got the Sunday's Coming uh, email yesterday, not sure how many did, but as we go forward and make and fulfill our pledges for the auditorium renovation, just use this familiar hearts uh, reaching out envelope that many of you use uh, in your contributions for the OC. Uh, new envelopes have been printed that give you the option of checking OC building fund or auditorium remodel. And as you fulfill those, those pledges going forward through the rest of the year, just use those and that would be appreciated very, very much. Um, I'm assuming with no evening service, life group leaders and co-leaders, we will reschedule that meeting that was scheduled for 344 this afternoon. And uh, Mike, you guys figure out what you're gonna do about tonight and just communicate with uh, parents, kids and everything. I mentioned last Sunday that it was the five year anniversary of my first visit here. Uh, back in 2009 and then two weeks later uh, Kim and the kids returned with me and uh, a few days later than that we accepted your gracious offer to come and serve with you in, in ministry here and what I shared on that first Sunday uh, that I was with you back five years ago uh, was a recitation of the Sermon on the Mount I think I've only done it on one Sunday night since then if you remember the two preaching interns that I've had since I've been here, Addison Keel and uh, Nate Michael, that's been one of their assignments over those summers is to, in addition to other classes and sermon preparation, to memorize the Sermon on the Mount and share it with us as a sermon. And it's kind of one of those things that is worth revisiting periodically because I don't know any section of Scripture. I don't know any concentrated portion of Jesus' teaching that is as convicting and challenging uh, encouraging in many ways and so I want us to do that again this morning I've put some images together that I hope will help our minds anchor to certain words and concepts and themes as we move through the sermon and this is in Matthew 5 6 and 7 as I've done in the past I would ask that that you not follow along if in your Bibles if you can help it and just hear the sermon as the listeners of Jesus would have heard the sermon. Obviously, I'm not going to be speaking in Aramaic this morning. I'll be speaking in English. And so my voice isn't going to sound like his voice. Uh, my words aren't going to sound like his words. Uh, but those Aramaic words translated into Greek, translated 
into English, hopefully we, hopefully we will get the sense of those. So much of the rest of the New Testament is built upon what Jesus shares in these three chapters. We're studying the book of James on Life Group Sunday. Some people have called James a commentary on the Sermon on the Mount because James is going to hit over and over and over again these, these same themes. Some people have called this uh, the ethics of the kingdom of God, th thus the title of the lesson, Live Like This. If for some reason the Holy Spirit had chosen not to have recorded for us all these other things that Jesus said, if for whatever reason the Holy Spirit did not preserve for our learning and instruction the letters to the churches, the New Testament epistles, as we call them, if this is all we had, was Matthew 5, 6, and 7, we would still have a pretty good feel for how God wants us to live as His children. Uh, what our morality, what our ethics, what our values, what our thinking, what our behavior, what our relationships with other people should be. And so I would encourage you that this morning to, to just listen to, again, what's been called the ethics of the kingdom of God, uh, the manifesto of the great king. Some people have called it the Magna Carta of the kingdom of God. Because there's just so much here. You'll hear words, see words and phrases that have been picked up by the authors, men and women who have written our, our beautiful hymns and spiritual songs. Even some newer praise songs have been based upon what, what Jesus shares here. And so, uh, again, if you can try to focus on, on the words, focus on the images and allow them to help anchor your mind and your heart to what Jesus is, is saying here. Robert, I'd like to ask you if you would to go ahead and dim the lights, uh, if, if that might help us a little bit this morning to, to focus. Let's pray together and let me check to make sure we got communication here, which we do. Let's pray together and then listen to the words of Jesus. Almighty Father, we thank you again for the blessing that it is to be your children. Father, we know that we have only been born again as your children. We've only been adopted as your children because of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we have focused in this memorial feast on his sacrificial death, the body that was bruised and beaten uh, and suffered death, the body that, that bled so profusely uh, from the beating, from the nails, from the crown of thorns, from the spear in his side. So, Father, we know that it's because of him, it's because of what he did for us that we can even be here this morning. But, Father, we know that he didn't just come to redeem us, didn't just come to save us. He came to teach us how to live. And, Father, as his earliest disciples sat and listened to him teach, uh, we pray that you would allow our minds and hearts uh, to sit before you this, this morning, for our knees to bow before you for our ears to be attentive, for our hearts to be open, noted, knowing that these are not my words, but these are the words of your Son, and that if he were here today, he would challenge us with those same words. We thank you, Father, that through your Holy Spirit you are with us, that your Son has promised never to leave us or forsake us, uh, that he is with us always to the end of the age. And Father, to the end of the age, or until he comes, or until death take us, takes us, it's our desire to conform our lives to his will and to be transformed into him, his image. We ask these blessings of you and give you all of our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for uh, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. 
Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You were the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how will it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke will pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not commit murder. And whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the supreme court. And whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Therefore, if you're presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you're with him on the way, so that your opponent may not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Truly I say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last cent. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you. For it's better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. For it's better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It was said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of, of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the reason of unchastity, makes her commit adultery. Whoever, com uh, whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, make no oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it's the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of evil. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. If whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You've heard that it was said you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving will be in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you pray, you're not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. 
But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will repay you. And when you're praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Whenever you fast, do not neglect your appearance as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance so that they will be noticed by men when they are fasting. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break through and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. For this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? Who of you by being worried can add a single cubit to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow was thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged, and by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs. Do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you when his son asks for bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask Him? So then, in everything, treat people the same way you want them to treat you. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. The gate is small, the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. 
you'll know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So then, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Again, this is a, a section of scripture where... God will find us wherever we are in our life, whatever season we're in in our life. Whether we've been a Christian for five weeks or five months or 50 years. Uh, whether we are single or married or divorced or uh, widowed. Uh, there, there is something in here that will always find us exactly where we woke up that morning. Something to encourage us. Something to give us strength something to convict us, something to challenge us, uh, something to help us be more motivated to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ and to conform our lives to his teaching. I hope that, that we're seeking to be those blessed people of humility, poverty in spirit, those who can mourn over sin, those who deal with one another in the gentleness with which Jesus has dealt with us those who daily hunger and thirst for righteousness, to, to show to others the mercy that we have received from God, to seek purity of heart, to seek in a, in a world of strife and animosity, sometimes even in relationships in the body of Christ, to be peacemakers and to be willing to suffer for his namesake, to be salt, to be light, uh, to not be content with refraining from outward actions that conflict with God's will, not only refraining from murder but cleansing our, our hearts of hate, not being content to just refrain from sexual sin but to remove all lust from our hearts, to be people of our, of our word who do not need to take oaths but our yes is yes and our no is no, people who trust our Heavenly Father to provide for our needs, people who don't have to have the applause of men. And so when we give to the poor, when we pray, when we fast, it is because of our devotion to God through Jesus Christ. It's because of our relationship with him, not to put on some display of piety before other people, that we're laying up for ourselves treasures in heaven, that, that we don't hypocritically judge one another, and look for the tiniest flaw, the tiniest speck in someone else's eye or life and live in neglect of glaring spiritual problems in, in our own life. And that we're seeking God through asking, through knocking. He has promised that he will answer. That we will truly seek to treat others as we ourselves want to be treated. That we will continue to walk that narrow way that leads to life that will cling to truth, and that falsehood just won't find a, a place in our mind. It, it won't find a place in our hearts. And that we will truly hear his words and, and live by them. Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and yet don't do the things that I say? Part of our response to the grace of God has involved our confession of his name. We have called him Lord. We have called him Savior. And that means something. 
it means master, it means ruler, it means you're now in charge of my life. So he said, please, 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 don't call me Lord if you're not going to listen to my voice, if you're not going to do what I say. And so as we go out from this place a little earlier this morning and, and in the snow, uh, whatever this, this week brings, uh, let's, let's commit ourselves, revisit this regularly in your devotional reading. Um, wouldn't be a bad thing to, to read this every single day or a few times a week to make sure we're conforming ourselves to, to the will of God. And if you're among those who want to not only cry out, Lord, Lord, but to submit your life to his will, we would love to assist you with that this morning, either in becoming a, a Christian, returning to a, a prior commitment to him that you have made, or just to help you bear burdens in your life through prayer. Whatever that need is, we'll have shepherds at the front here to receive you. Let's stand and sing.